superstitions, and beliefs. The world of myth is filled with fairies, creatures of mystery, curses, blessings, hidden treasure, and dark souls in the night. Every realm of creativity touches on these subjects. Literature, film, music, art, dance all delight the mind and the imagination with sprites, goblins, and pixies. England's traditions are certainly no exception. Some of the tales and beliefs in the English countryside are shared by other groups of Celts, such as the fairies, others are unique to the English pantheon of beliefs. While Ireland has a more cohesive set of these fairy tales, there are several that were shared with England, Wales, and England, and many that could be leftovers from the Britain times. I find English myths have a lighter flavor than most of the Irish myths do. Perhaps this is because the country itself is a bit gentler in its mountains and coastlines. But these tales could still chill the heart when told around a fire in the dark night. The audience wouldn't be idle while the stories were told. Listeners could be spinning, or mending a harness, or whittling buttons, but they listened as the stories were told. Do keep in mind that the English fairy beliefs, as well as modern pagan beliefs, are a living tradition. Please treat them with respect. The Tower of London Ravens Charles II was told that if ravens were ever to leave the Tower of London, that the White Tower would fall, and a great disaster would befall the kingdom. Therefore, Charles II decreed that a group of ravens should be kept in the tower at all times, their wings clipped to keep them close. Fairies while most of the fairy folklore we think of today came from the Celtic tales of Ireland and England, some aspects of those legends have made their way into English folklore. These were the original pre-Christian divinities of Gaelic England. The takeover of Christianity reduced these beings to hold only diminutive powers, also known as the Tuatha de Danann in Irish folklore. Fairies often guard particular places, such as a hill, a hawthorn tree, a lock or wood. Dusk and dawn are particularly dangerous to encounter them, as are the feasts of Samhain, Bealton, and Midsummer, summer solstice. Most of the English use of fairies is in literature like medieval romances, Edmund Spencer and the Fairy Queen, Shakespeare's Midsummer Night's Dream, and to the modern era with J. R. R. Tolkien's Middle-earth saga. Arthurian Legends while there may be some historic basis for the tales, most scholars agree that King Arthur's tales are mostly fabricated or a conflation of several leaders who lived in the early medieval age. The legendary Arthur is familiar to most people as the king who made England safe from raiding Anglo-Saxons and formed the Knights of the Round Table. These knights went on various quests, especially for the Holy Grail. He had a mystical sword, Excalibur, gifted to him by the Lady of the Lake, and his main advisor was the equally legendary wizard, Merlin. Spring-Heeled Jack This legend dates to Victorian times, a terrifying man with the ability to make stupendous leaps. His hands were claws and his eyes were red balls of fire. Some said he wore a helmet and a white oilskin garment. The Legend of the Lambton Worm John Lambton, the heir to the Lambton estate, was rumored to have battled a giant worm or dragon that was terrorizing the local town. John only managed to defeat this creature by preparing his armor as per a witch's instructions, with spearheads all over it. When the worm tries to crush him, it cuts itself to pieces. However, there was a curse. John must kill the first creature he sees after killing the worm. Even though he was warned, his father rushes to congratulate John. Even though he tries to thwart the curse by killing his favorite dog instead, the family is cursed for nine generations. Harry Hands of Dartmoor, Devon Related to the Bean Essay of Irish legend, the spirit attaches itself to a family or clan in Keynes with the mourning of an upcoming death. The White Wizard and the White Mare, Alderley Edge a farmer from Moberly was going to sell his mare at market. He met an old man dressed in white, who offered to buy it, but the farmer thought he could get a better price in town. However, he had no luck and returned to the old man, who led him into a secret place, with ancient knights sleeping on the ground. These knights were to wake and fight in the hour of the country's greatest need. 
The farmer was paid with gold coins and led outside, and the secret entrance shut, never to be seen again. John O. Kent, Hertfordshire Possibly from around the 13th century, John O. Kent or John of Kent was an old hermit with supernatural powers. There are tales of him outwitting the devil or selling his soul to the devil to have supernatural power. Sometimes he uses these powers for good, such as building a bridge in a single night. However, the devil could have the soul of the first to cross. Jack sent a starving dog over the bridge, and the devil took what he could get. There are some who believe that John Oakent wrote A Midsummer Night's Dream rather than Shakespeare. The Fairy Hills of Cumbria There are a few fairy sites in this area. Elva Hill on the banks of Bassenthwaite Lake. The hill is said to hide a gateway to the Otherworld, which only opens at certain times of the year. There is a Neolithic stone circle which originally had about thirty standing stones, but only half remain. King Eveling's Wrath is in the old Roman fort of Medio Bogdum. Tradition claims that a fairy wrath stands within the site, and it's possible the name is derived from the Old Norse word for elf. It also holds associations with King Arthur legends. Another place related to King Arthur is the Castle Rock of Triermain. It looks like an ancient castle, and supposedly King Arthur and a host of fairies visited, while Gwendolyn was sent into an enchanted sleep by Merlin. Dick Whittington Richard Whittington was a real person who lived in the late 14th-early 15th century. He was a wealthy merchant and Lord Mayor of London. However, many stories tell of his rise from an impoverished youth and prophecies of his rise to power. This tale is a favorite in British pantomimes. Beast of Bodmin Moor The creature is panther-like and black-furred, and it stalks around Bodmin Moor in Cornwall, England, killing livestock. It's supposedly a phantom, because big cats shouldn't be in England's moors. This is a modern legend, dating from the 20th century. Sir Gawain and the Green Knight Part of the Arthurian legends, this tale is one of the more popular, and has recently been made into a movie. The tale itself dates from the late 14th century and describes a game where each opponent is to behead the other to win. It draws on many sources, such as Welsh, Irish, and English stories. Sir Gawain accepts a challenge from a mysterious visitor, a knight who is all green, or dressed in green. The dare is that whoever strikes him will be struck in return, in a year and a day. The Lincoln Imp There is a grotesque sculpture in the Lincoln Cathedral which, according to a 14th-century tale, is rumored to be a creature sent by Satan, but turned into stone by an angel who emerged from a book of hymns. Robin Hood the tales of Robin Hood vie with King Arthur as the most popular English tale. It's widely debated if he was ever a true person, though he may be based on several people, or even be a title held by many. In the legend, he was an excellent archer and a nobleman turned outlaw who gathered a group of merry men in Sherwood Forest, near Nottingham. This group targeted rich travelers, stole their coins and jewels, and distributed the stolen wealth to the poor. The first tales of Robin Hood, however, have no mention of the common characters in the tales today, such as Maid Marian or Friar Tuck. The Sheriff of Nottingham is the clear antagonist, and Robin is joined by Little John, Will Scarlet, and Much the Miller's son. Stonehenge Stonehenge, located in Wiltshire, England, is one of the world's most famous prehistoric monuments. Built in several stages from approximately 3000 BCE to 1600 BCE, it features a unique, circular arrangement of standing stones, some weighing up to 25 tons. Its construction and purpose have puzzled scholars for centuries, but it is thought to have served as a ceremonial or religious site. It's aligned with the movements of the sun, suggesting a possible astronomical function. Some stones were sourced from over 150 miles away, a remarkable achievement for the Neolithic people. Despite modern archaeological studies, many mysteries of Stonehenge remain unsolved, contributing to its enduring allure. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site and an iconic symbol of Britain's ancient past. 
St. George and the Dragon The story of St. George, or at least that type of story, has ancient origins. Jason and Medea, Perseus and Andromeda, there is always a hero fighting a fearsome monster to save an innocent woman from being a sacrifice. Even after Christianization, the legend wore several other faces first, such as St. Theodore or St. Demetrius. But St. George is not only an integral legend to England, he's the patron saint. The legend says that he went to save the princess, but he offered to kill the dragon if the city promised to become Christian. The Holy Grail Though I touched on this with the discussion of King Arthur, I think the Holy Grail deserves its own section. Legend has it that the Grail was carried to Britain by Joseph of Arimathea. He came to what is now Glastonbury and planted a tree there, which still grows to this day. There is much debate about the shape of the Grail. It might be a wooden bowl, a gold salver, a jeweled chalice, or, if Dan Brown is to be believed, the child of Christ. Changelings Sickly offspring of fairies who are secretly switched in place of a human child. If you can see them with true sight, they appear as little old men or women. The human child usually dies shortly afterwards. The Green Man According to some sources, ancient pagan traditions speak of the Green Man, a symbol of rebirth and the cycle of seasons. He is usually portrayed with a face of branches or vines, leaves or flowers. There are many architectural images of him through both churches and secular buildings, especially in Gothic architecture. The foliate face of the green man may be a descendant of Bacchus or Dionysus, gods of wine and revelry. There is also a Christian connection to the quest of Seth, the twigs and seeds planted under Adam's tongue by his son, Seth. The Green Children of Woolpit Around the 12th century, stories of two children mysteriously appearing in Woolpit started. Not only did they appear from nowhere, they had green skin and couldn't speak the local language. While they were adopted by Sir Richard de Calne, fed, and clothed, learning English, and finally explained their origin as the land of St. Martin. But no one knew what that meant. Supposedly, the sun didn't shine on this land, as it was forever twilight. They were lured to this world by the ringing of church bells at St. Edmund's. Hauntings Many of the ruined castles of England boast a ghost or two. Some of the more well-known castles, with their hauntings, are Ordsell Hall, Salford, Small Children and John Radcliffe. The Tower of London, Walter Raleigh, and Bullen, or the White Lady. Borley Rectory, Essex. Pluckley Village, Kent, a screaming man and a highwayman pinned to a tree. Raynham Hall, Norfolk, the Brown Lady. Ancient Ram Inn, Watton Under Edge, Gloucestershire, built on a pagan burial ground. The Jamaica Inn, Cornwall, an old coaching inn, inspiration for a novel by Daphne du Maurier. Pendle Hill, Lancashire, the Pendle Witch Trials of 1612. Hampton Court Palace, London, two of Henry VIII's wives, Catherine Howard and Jane Seymour. Highgate Cemetery, London, a tall man in a hat, a shrouded figure, and other apparitions. Barry Pomeroy Castle, Devon, the White Lady and the Blue Lady. 50 Berkeley Square, London, the most haunted house in London, by a young woman who committed suicide there. Chillingham Castle, Northumberland, the Blue Boy and Lady Mary. Samlesbury Hall, Lancashire, Lady Dorothy Southworth and a group of white-clad ladies. Woodchester Mansion, Gloucestershire, floating coffins and a headless horseman. Athelhampton House, Dorset, a pair of dueling specters. Charleville Castle, Tullamore, a little girl. Arundel Castle, West Sussex, a blue man. Cannock Chase, Staffordshire, a black-eyed child. Dudley Castle, West Midlands, the Grey Lady, thought to be Dorothy Beaumont. Hellfire Caves, West Wickham, Paul Whitehead. SS Great Britain, Bristol, Captain John Grey. The Golden Fleece Pub, York, the most haunted pub in York.